Hey guys, in today's video, uh, let's take a look at how we can uh, rig a car here in Maya using set driven keys instead of using expressions or uh, manually uh, setting keyframes. So this question came from uh, Bobby on my channel. Thanks for asking this awesome question. And the question was to uh, show how to uh, rig a box with four, um, you know, four wheels um, or cylinders. But I think it would be a lot more interesting if we just grabbed a free model and use that instead of a box, right? So let's go ahead and uh, download uh, a free car model. So here's one that I just found from uh, a RCC design artist on Sketchfab. And if I click on his name, you can see that uh, he has beautiful uh, assets and some of them are free. So the one that I would like to use for this tutorial is this one right here. I'm just going to simply click on download and I'll provide a link in the uh, descriptions of this video. So I'm going to say download and the options come up and because I'm going into Maya, um, I do uh, need to convert this into FBX. So for that, I'm going to uh, use this GLTF version. So I'm going to say download. All right, next, I'm going to import this file into Blender. Let's go ahead and find it. Um, we downloaded the GLTF. All right, here's the file. I'm going to go ahead and say import. Um, it comes with this ground. I don't really want the ground, so I'm going to simply select it and delete it. If I wanted to see what the wireframe looks like for this model, we can click on this button here in Blender and check it out. Uh, we can also click on this button here to see the textures, and you can see what that looks like. It looks really um amazing uh now i would what i would like to do is i want to export this out uh, to maya as an fbx file but you can see that it also comes with a lot of extra stuff uh, as well right it has a lot of seem uh, seemingly uh things that we don't really need locators and things so i just want the mesh right so what, what, how do i export just the mesh so i'm going to go to file export let's do fbx and in here let's just uh Put it in the same folder so i'm going to have a do a sports car and um in here uh to um if you open up this include um, option right i just want the mesh i don't want the armature i don't want the cameras and all this other stuff i just want the mesh for this car so i'm going to just select that and just say export let's jump into maya and in maya i'm going to say file import Let's find our sports car as an FBX file and do import. All right, you can see what that looks like. So I would like to uh, scale this down. So I'm going to select um, everything, press Control G, and I'm going to go to scale. And let's just simply scale this car down to be something a little more uh, in line with our measurements here in Maya, right? Very cool. Let's make sure it's on the ground. If I go to the side view, I believe it is. Very nice. And uh, let's see, we can also turn on our textures, which should kick in by uh, default. Uh, that's looking pretty good. We uh, can leave the default lights, or if we wanted to, just for uh, fun, we could drop some lights in here using, um, if you want to drop like a directional light. I'm just going to scale this up. Uh, very nice. Let's position it into something appealing and let's turn the lights on so we can see what we're doing. And the cool thing about setting up uh, even uh, just for an experiment, your own lights is that then you can use uh, shadows, right? Just a little uh, tip here. And this is not going to be like an Arnold rendering or anything. It's just for us to play around to make it look a little more appealing. And it does look uh, a little bit dark on this side. So I'm going to do control D. And let's put another light maybe on this side. Now we have two. And uh, I think that will work. Now I don't want to look at these lights as we play around. So I'm going to go to show, viewport. Let's turn the lights off as far as the visibility goes. And uh, now we can also turn on ambient occlusion if we wanted to or not. And just for fun, uh, if we wanted to right click on this window, let's go to material attributes. And it's currently set to this green color i'm going to switch it to black and let's go ahead and change the transparency um, as well maybe turn this up a little more and 
again, just, just having fun, right? All right, so next we need to set this up for uh, animation, right? So what I need to do, if I open this group up, you can see it has many, many different pieces. Um, what I would like to do is I'm gonna select the body and I would like to combine all this into one. So to help me, I'm gonna uh, go to layers and what I could do is I can add this to a layer. And what I could do is I can continue selecting all these floating pieces and just right click and let's do add selected objects to the same layer. And now we know that this layer contains the entire car, right? And the wheels are sort of by themselves, which is cool because if we uh, select the wheels, uh, we can press H to hide them. We can unhide the car now we can select the entire body of the car and just combine everything into one mesh and clear history. And now we know that this is going to be, I'm going to call this body, right? That's going to be my body of the car. Very nice. Let's go ahead and um, unhide everything. And if you don't have that button, that's going to be under display, uh, show all, right? That's going to unhide everything. Or of course you can just select them here and just press H, which is even uh, easier. All right. So now uh, I'm going to hide my uh, body and I want to do the same thing with the wheels. I want to make sure that each wheel is its own kind of a mesh, right? So I'm going to select all of this. I'm going to combine it into one, clear my history and center my pivot. And let's do the same thing for each, right? Combine clear history, center pivot. All right, so now we have four wheels and the body of the car. Very cool. If we wanted to, let's go ahead and also maybe name these. This is gonna be front uh, left. This is going to be uh, front right. We got back left and of course back right. I'm gonna unhide my uh, body of the car and now everything is ready for uh, our uh, rigging experiment. So next let's go ahead and select everything and let's just clear, uh, make sure that everything is, all the uh, transformations are frozen. So I'm gonna click on freeze transformations. You can see everything is zeroed out. So no matter what I click on everything is going to be zeroed out. So that's super important, right? All right, so to get started, let's do this. Let's go into our animation. And in here, let's go to something called key. Set driven keys and do a set. All right. And let's go ahead and select the body of the car. And that's going to be our driver, right? I'm going to select the uh, wheels of the car and that's going to be our uh, driven. So the driver is gonna be driving these four meshes, right? Which means when I move this around, I want these to uh, behave in a certain way. So now uh, what we should do is we need to set keys for um, all of this, right? So let's go ahead and select um, this, hold down the shift key, select all of these, and first, actually, let's just decide what are we animating. So we're animating, you can see if I rotate this, um, rotate X value is changing. So I know that that's going to be true for each one of these wheels. And I know that if I move the car back and forth, that's going to be translate Z. So that's really important to understand, right? And for us to know. So in here, let's go ahead and select the body and let's say uh, translate uh, Z, right? We'll select that. And again, holding down the shift key, make sure all of these selected. And for uh, these, let's go ahead and say rotate on X. So I'm gonna click on that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set a key. And you can see a little blue box appears, right? So that means that this, the movement on, um, the movement of the body of the car is going to drive the rotation, right, of all of these guys, right? Very cool. So now, uh, since we set the key on zero, let's go ahead and tell uh, Maya what is the actual animation. So the actual animation is gonna be, if I move this forward, let's say I move this something like 
uh, let's do 70 units, right? So if I do this, let's say an even number, 70 units. If I move this 70 units, I want all of these, each one of these, rotating on X 360 degrees. So I'm going to select each one of these. And on X, let's go ahead and type in 360. Press Enter. I'm going to click on the next one and do the same thing. Type in 360 and just keep repeating it for each one of these wheels, right? And just press enter. All right, so let's just double check. If I click on each wheel, I can see that 360 is in there, right? And uh, now I'm gonna set a key. So what I've done is I told Maya when this moves 70 units up or whatever the number is uh, for your measurement, uh, these need to be rotating three, uh, 360 degrees. So now if I put this back to zero, grab it and move it, you can see that the wheels are going to begin to spin. Now they're not following the car yet, right? So we need to make sure that um, they also follow the car. So I'm going to select the body, hold on the shift key, select one of them first. Let's go to uh, constraints. Let's do a point constraints. Let's go to um, options. Let's go ahead and reset this. And in here, I'm just going to say maintain offset. So I'm going to select this. I want to make sure that the wheel stays in the same spot and doesn't jump somewhere else. I'm just say apply and close. So now if I move this, if I press W, if I, if I try to move this, you can see that the wheel is rotating with the car, right? Very cool. So now we need to do the same constraint for the, re for the rest of them. I'm going to select the body the car, press G to repeat my last command. Do the same thing for this. Just press G, press G and enter. So now if I grab this car and begin to move it, you can see that it's kind of moving. Um, the wheels are rotating. Now there's a small problem, right? The problem is if we start to, um, in the very beginning, it kind of moves very little and then it kind of picks up speed. And it also doesn't really uh, rotate in the negative direction. So how do we fix that? So to fix this, let's put the car back to zero. Uh, to fix this, we need to go to Windows, Animation, Graph Editor. Let's select everything. And in here, we have this animation curve uh, for our wheels. So I'm going to select it and switch it to uh, linear by pressing this button here. And you can see this line is now straight which means if I grab the body of the car and begin to move it, the wheels start to spin right away, right? There's no uh, delay of easing in or easing out or anything like that, which is great. And now how do we fix this car also spinning when, you, when it goes back? So to fix that, select the whole thing. Let's look at the curve. Here's our curve. And we need to click on this button here called pre-infinity cycle. And then we need one for post-infinity cycle. You can see these red lines appear on the left and the right side of our animation curve, which means no matter which direction this goes, the car is going to uh, rotate accordingly. So that's pretty much it. That's how uh, easy and fun it is to rig something using set driven keys, right? And uh, of course you can adjust the rotation based on these different uh, units and set different keys, but this was kind of a rough um, experiment. All right, I hope you uh, find this useful. Thanks so much for uh, watching it and I'll see you in our next video.